hello Facebook groups um, I'm saying Facebook groups because I belong to two Futura groups one is called the Futura fans and another one is Futura embroidery and I've been hanging out on both boards equally and learned I've learned so much in the little bit of time I've been on these boards okay this is the second part of my second video and again I wanted to real quick uh, give you a little background more on me only because I read a post yesterday from a lady that was about to move into a new home and how her husband is on the opposite end of the house as she is from her cra her new craft room where it's going to be located and I had to laugh because as I was reading this post out loud to my husband he goes did you write that and I say that because we moved into this house in September last September and I'm disabled and I'm not worth the hill of beans when it comes to moving I can pack boxes and stuff like that but I tire very easily he ended up doing 99% of the move by himself along with a gentleman that lived with uh, across the street from us in our old neighborhood and thank God for that man because my poor husband could not have done this alone and he has a bad back himself so when we moved into this home and I first saw it when you walk into the living room and and this room is parallel to the living room you walk into the front door and immediately to your right is the living room immediately to your left is this room and it's gigantic uh, apparently it was supposed to be a, a family room but even so have the family room so close to the living room I think is counterproductive but that's just me but the minute I saw this room, I said, that's my room. Because <laughs> I like to be where there's a lot of window. And as you can see, there's this huge window behind me. And I get to look out in the front. And I got a really large window to the left. Also, I babysit. And when we first moved in here, I had three children I was babysitting. And now I no longer watch those three. And now I have an eight-month-old that I'm watching. Um, so I already did this room as half of it was going to be the um, daycare area and the other half was going to be my craft area. Well, I don't have to tell all of you that my craft room area is busting at the seams. This is just a bookcase here and then my window and here's the new baby sitting right there <laughs> my desk piled high both sides yeah well I listed those couches on uh, Craigslist today I need to get them out of here quickly um, but when I first uh, got in this room I had the big desk over here and this table right here was just um, half half its size and it wasn't long at all before I really needed more room. Um, my cutting area, I would have to take this um, bigger mat that you see down here, the gray mat, over into the kitchen, which you can barely see right there, and do all of my um, fabric cutting. I looks like my camera's off center here. I'm sorry. Um, so. Yeah, I needed a bigger area, so my husband added um, an, this um, long um, plywood on top of my desk, which doubled in size. And then, as I'm trying to do my um, quilting, for all of you non-quilters, um, there's piecing, as you see on my wall right there. I've just completed this one. I mean, I just, I'm just starting that one. And once I get that all sewed together, then I put a line, um, the center piece, which is going to be the batting, and then a back piece, which is the backing of the quilt. And then after you get those three pieces together, that's called a quilt sandwich. Once you have your quilt sandwich basted, that's when you actually begin the quilting of a quilt. And that's all the little swirly doodads and whatnot you see on a quilt to hold the quilt together, and it gives it definition and design. And while I was doing that with 
uh, this last small quilt that you see right there, baby quilt. I had so much trouble because I was having to hold up the material and feed through the material. It was very tiring on my arms. So I was telling my husband that um, if we could recess the, the um, sewing machine into the table, then um, it would be a lot easier on me. Then I could just slide it. And as you see, that's what he did. And then let me show you. Right here, this one right here is my second or third baby quilt that I made. And then these, I don't know if you can see this, these are called a rag quilt. And they're so easy and fun to make. And this one right here is a little receiving blanket. And here's another rag quilt. I'm making this rag quilt and this one for my two grandsons. They're a year apart in age. Um, they like that uh, silky feeling that is on their original blanket, so I duplicated it on these. So these are more of a big boy blanket. Um, then, as I was saying, I was having such a hard time with the quilting process is when I stumbled onto this Futura Quartet. Okay, this is, I just wanted to run that by you again to really get you caught up to where I'm at. All right, so here's what I wanted to show you. Um, what I've done since I've had my machine. When you first load your machine, it has you, if you want to do a test image. Well, my first test image, and you probably can't see this really well, maybe against the red there, is this flower. And I was not happy with it right off the bat, so I got rid of that. And then I made this. And remember, when you do these um, test things, and you first get your future, I know I said this in the first video, but I really mean this, make up a bunch of these. Uh, you know your hoops are going to be 4 by 4s and just make the material, you know, a little bit bigger. This is what, uh, a 10 by 9 inch square. So a 10 by 10 square, even an 8 by 8 would have fit in there nicely. Um, have some of these made up with some test material and different types of stabilizer. This is an iron-on. Um, the one I used here was a tear-away. And this was just a complete disaster. Um, I had all kinds of problems with the, the needle. I wasn't happy where it, um, where it started down so far. And I really, what I wanted to do with the quilt against the, my design wall over there is this is a basket and I want to put a handle on the basket and then flowers coming out uh, embroider-wise. I wasted a whole square, which was crazy for me to do, especially when I wasn't used to the machine at all. Okay. So, make yourself up some of these different colors, um, um, different types of stabilizer, tearaway, iron-on, light, heavy. There's many um, videos on the website that explain all about stabilizers and which to use with which material. But when you're first pulling that machine out of the box and you set up, you want to play. So, really do this. Um, now, this is what is considered a quilt sandwich. You got your backing, you got your um, batting, and then your uh, top layer, which is usually pieced. This was another attempt, um, actually my first attempt using the quilt sandwich. And as you can see, the, the bobbin thread came out through this. And I've already read several um, posts that ask, why is this happening? Well, I wish I could tell you why, but all I could do is to tell you, stop the machine, Pull your um, hoop out, take your bobbin out, you know, make sure the bobbin is going in the right direction, make sure your bobbin is nice and full, re-thread the bobbin, pull the other thread out, and I also read today is cut the thread that is on the spool and then pull it through like you normally would instead of pulling it backwards. So pull your thread through normally. Um, Retry it, put the hoop back in, turn it back up, and I bet you, in no time, you will have, you have, where is it? Here she is. This is what I started with. This is what it ended up being. This is a continuous line, and that's the type of step you use when you're quilting. So don't get discouraged when this kind of stuff happens. Just realize it does happen. Regroup. 
rethread, rebobbin, and voila. This little tiny design gave me so many birds' nests, I have no idea what was wrong, but I finally gave up on it. Tossed that one. Look at this. This is my first one. Uh, oh, by the way, most of this was done with some really cheap Walmart thread. And um, I couldn't afford to put my um, order into the Metro uh, website, which I'll be doing next week sometime. But I was able to jump on Amazon, and I ordered some... Uh, you know, and I really forget the name of the company, but it came in uh, 20 spool sets. These are 550, and it's 40 weight, and it had a lot of really good reviews. And once I got this, and I got a large cone of the bobbin fill, which is 60 weight, um, and filled uh, several bobbins, this is what I did with the new thread, and I never had one bit of a problem. Really happy with that. This was done with the old thread, and I didn't have any problem with this one as well. As you can see, most of my, my test pieces were done on sandwiches, quilt sandwiches. Okay, so the real reason why I got this machine is to do the stippling design and whatnot. Well, I found a new one, and this was my first attempt at the large hoop. And I've heard several people having issues with getting this large hoop taunt enough. Well, I was afraid of that, but seeing that it was just going to be one continuous line that was never going to pass over each other, I thought, what the heck, I'm going to give it a try, and I did, and I had no problems with this. As you can see, I've got stabilizer in here along with my batting, so, um, and then the, the backing, of course, and it came out beautifully, but um, there's no way I want this tiny little uh, printing, you know, a um, stitch on a large quilt. So I went back searching out on the internet again and I found this one which is absolutely perfect. And the machine printed this in seconds. So my fear of rehooping and hooping um, a large quilt was immediately erased last night when I accomplished this in probably just less than five minutes. So I'm really excited about this one. Okay, here's another one um, with that little tiny design. And for some reason, I thought if I used the larger hoop, it would come out larger. Uh, my crazy brain wasn't working straight. Here was uh, another attempt with the uh, uh, other looping, little loops. Uh, this was an attempt to print, and I'm not getting this yet, so I'm sure as soon as I get it, you're going to see a video on it. Okay, that's uh, kind of the stuff I wanted to talk about here. Um, please, if you have questions... Um, that I can show you on the um, um, uh, a video. Ask them, and I'll do it. And I I have found a lot of videos on the internet. That's what's helped me get through as far as I am today. But I know it's really nice to have fresh blood and seeing someone who just got their machine, seeing how it's worked, instead of watching a video that's a year old or two years old. So um, ask questions, and I will try really hard to answer them. For now, talk to you later. Have a great Easter weekend. Bye-bye.